Okay, we are back, and this is Daniel Miller again at the Spiral Gardens Community Food Security Project. I just had to restart the live video because I had it vertical. <laughs> this bed, for the purpose of getting it all in when we're doing this, is needs to be horizontal. So that was not a pro move, but we've started over again. And so this is a, just a little demo bed. It's in the middle of our spiral gardens nursery, and it's just meant to be like a little example of how much food you can grow in a small space. It's kind of an impromptu, sort of urban style thing. So in the front of it, it's just logs and cinder blocks to hold a little soil so that it's got a first tier right here that's maybe a foot or more of soil. It is directly on the ground. The ground here, this is a former railroad track, and it goes many blocks that way, all the way to Albany, El Cerrito. And it tested positive, I mean, excuse me, it tested clear of toxins on this particular lot, but it's hard packed gravel right below. So the ground's not that great for digging into. So we built up, and this is all soil that from our nursery and also came out of our chicken run. So it's very fertile. This is its second year, so it's not starting clear right now. It would have been easier to show you the whole thing when it first started out. But um, part of growing things is clearing out what's previous. So I actually left a few things in there so we could pull them together right now in order for you to get kind of a sense of what it's like when you're clearing out an old bed, making choices, and then planting new stuff. So we'll see how far we get today. But it's got a second tier within just of a terrace made out of uh, concrete chunks. See some hiding behind here, too. Uh, the fancy hipster word for concrete chunks as a landscaping tool is urbanite. <laughs> so made of urbanite and then the back to create a retaining wall along the higher soil in the back I just used 15 gallon buckets. I had originally covered them in burlap which made them look a lot softer to the eye because you know that black plastic's not so pretty. But the burlap decomposed in the season and in these little spots right here, hopefully you can see this, between the pots, I just put some of these thick tree stakes. Oh, okay, that didn't work. <laughs> to stop this soil from falling between the pots. And these pots could be removable if needed, but they provide a very easy uh, and tall retaining wall for all this soil. We've got about two feet of soil in the middle here. Um, but they also didn't require any fancy construction, and they also provide places for planting stuff themselves. Now, it had a whole summer crop in here before, and I a lot of that's faded. Some of that's still in here. Let me see if I can get this camera mounted now on the tripod, and we will see if I can get some work done on this. I think we're going to have to do it this way. Turn the camera the, kind of the wrong way, but I think this will work out. So yeah, I'm just going to get this set. Hopefully, get a decent view of this bed where you guys can see most of it. And we'll, I'll pull it, the camera up and do close-ups again as we go. I'm my own cameraman today, so we're figuring this out as we go. And then hopefully you guys can see me now. I'm going to pull this up on the iPad again like I do. And then hopefully I'll be able to see your questions and comments as we go along. So feel free to comment. Uh, this is a live event. And the point of that is to be able to interact with you all. So I just got to figure out 
It's a challenge every time. Here it is. Demo planting part two. Let me make it so I can see the comments. Cool. And then I can see the framing of it. Nice. Excellent. So I'm just going <laughs> to put this down in the bed here and keep an eye on the comments. So feel free. Um, but yeah, let's get a little work done on this here. So I actually, actually have to move this over a little bit. I'll put it on this bucket over here. Uh, but yeah, let's talk about what's in here. And then let's put some new stuff. So yeah, we had this planned up with summer stuff. This was all basil before. It died. I just took it out. There's a few things left in here now. And a lot of things you get out of beds are unintentional. Like this is duck. This is a weed. But duck actually is really good medicine. There's a fellow, an elder who lives over at the senior center. He um, has like, I think it's like rheumatoid arthritis in his knees. Or maybe, no, gout is what he said he had. And he, he says that doc really works well for his gout. So he asks for any doc we get here. So I'm going to harvest that doc for him. Hopefully you guys can all hear me. Let me know if the sound's coming through all right. I'm talking through earbuds today. We got a fancier mic now, but the taco truck has a uh, really loud generator going right now. So I can't use that mic today. I'm hoping these earbuds will work. Now, I just pulled this out. I accidentally clipped part of the root just now. But it's the root down there that's mainly used for this. And I don't know where the rest of the root went. I'm not sure how I clipped it so well. But anyway, we got some dock. Wanted to show you guys that. In here also is some fennel. Fennel, most people don't eat too much of this fennel. It's got a very licorice -y taste. But it um, is good habitat for the Anna Swallowtail butterfly. But I'm not going to leave any fennel in here. But we're just doing... A little plant ID as we go along. So that's some fennel right there. This is doc. This is yellow doc, I believe, because with my accidental slicing of the root, hopefully you can see that it's kind of yellow right there. I'm going to put these aside. And while I'm over here, I'm going to show you some of the initial harvest I got out of this bed when I was clearing it, getting ready for you guys. So in a bucket, one of the buckets back there, climbing on a tomato cage, we had cucumbers growing. So I got one last overly ripe cucumber out of there. I planted an eggplant, and this bed kind of got away from us at the end. That happens a lot. You shouldn't feel bad when that happens, but definitely is then good to go back in there and reclaim. I found some eggplants that we had planted. Uh, a little overly ripe, but I think they're still edible. I'm going to cook those up tonight. And then I got some celery. It's a little overgrown. Just a little bit of sorrel right here. And then one of these many peppers here. We're going to have to harvest those peppers right now. I also got a bunch of this... Uh, this is called Turkish Rocket, and this is an experiment in an edible perennial. Perennial means it grows year after year. I haven't really eaten it yet. I tried it raw, and it was actually really strong, kind of burning almost. Maybe if you cook it, it's better. But, you know, you got to check these things out. That rocket is right here. Hopefully you can see this. Um, it grows, kind of looks like a big dandelion or chicory. It's being very successful. But yeah, i got to get to the point where I'm actually eating it, or other people are. Over here is some sorrel, and a garden sorrel. I've shown you that. This is uh, sort of a spinach relative. It's got a lot of oxalic acid. It's very tangy when you eat it, raw. Too much of it apparently is will bind calcium, but... A little bit is pretty good. I shouldn't actually eat right now. I might start choking while I'm talking. Um, or just lightly cooked. Like if you're putting it in the broth or something, you 
put it in after you turn the broth off because I don't think it will stand much cooking. Let's see over here if anybody's commented. No, but we have a couple people watching right now. So hopefully uh, this is uh, coming through. Again, if someone could let me know if the sound's working, I'd definitely appreciate that because I want to make sure all this talking is uh, getting through. I'm doing it how I've done it before, so yeah. Hopefully that's good. Um, okay, so a few other things as we're clearing out in here. So I left these two big things. This is a weed that you'll get a lot. And you want to get that whole root because it'll grow back from the root. But this is mallow. So we're doing a lot of weed identification in here. Useful plant ID. Mallow's got these big kind of roundish scalloped leaves like that. Technically it's edible, but it's really not very palatable. There's a big difference between edible and palatable. But if you needed to eat this, you could. But it's good just to know it when you see it so you know that you can pull it. Look. Another common weed over here. This... Uh, this is, well, we got two, two for one just now. This is a relative of tomatoes and peppers. This is nightshade. It's also called deadly nightshade. I'm not sure how deadly it is. I don't re recommend eating it, but uh, those, these are ancestors of tomatoes here, these little black berries. I was always taught that these were poisonous, but... We had a woman volunteering in the nursery, or excuse me, in the farm, who was uh, from Taiwan, and she said that they eat that. She collected it to eat. So I can't, I can't really, uh, you know, recommend that myself because I always thought they were toxic. But yeah. <laughs> so that is nightshade, relative tomatoes, peppers. Oh, and. I accidentally threw away the, the two-for-one thing we got when we pulled it up. This here. This is purslane. So purslane is another edible. It's actually pretty tasty. A little bit slimy, but good. It's a little succulent. It comes up all over the place. If you let it go too long, it can take over a garden bed. So I wouldn't recommend leaving too much of it in, but probably enough that you still get seed of it. Um, it's got a lot of omegas in it, so uh, it's very good for you that way, especially if you're a vegetarian. And I'm just going to use it as a harvest in here. Back here, we have a bit more of it as well. I'm not going to leave it because it can take over the bed. But, yeah, I'm going to make it part of the harvest and put it aside. So knowing what you're pulling up is very useful because some of it may indeed be useful and you can get more value just because you didn't plant something yourself intentionally doesn't mean you don't want it. Got another little one of those nightshades and then a whole bunch of this purslane. So I'm going to put that aside, make it part of the harvest. I'm going to grab another box or two. We just get these flats from the liquor store next uh, next door. Reuse their beverage flats uh, for various things. Cool. JJ Sexton. <laughs> or you could drive by. I can throw some of the fence over for you. <laughs> if you put a comment before that, you can't see it. It's funny. The comments are fading in and out. Oh, there we go. You've been guys been saying something. Cool. JJ Sexton said the sound is great. Tried letting you know earlier, but I guess it didn't go through. Yeah, the comments for some reason they show up and then they fade out. So I have to keep touching it like that. Stupid thing. Um Hey Polly, what's going on? Sound is clear. You love Persling? Do you have any to sell? We have a uh, a variety of it that actually has bigger leaves and it's more succulent that you can come 
and get some of that. <laughs> that was the thing you're saying that I could uh, you could drive by. I wonder if there's a setting here. Oops, now it's down. And here we go. Let me get it back up. I was wondering if there was a setting where I can make it so the comments don't fade out. And that's not what I want either. Man, one of these days I'll get this down. I don't know. I'll just have to keep touching it, seeing if they pop up and stuff. Cool. Right on, JJ. So, yeah, um, a little bit more clearing, and then we'll do some little fertilizing and planting. I got some gloves over here because we're going to harvest some nettles, another unintentional planting. And then while I'm back here, talk about a couple other things that are in here now. So we've got some, I showed you the sorrel already right here. This is celery right here and right here. I like me some celery. Celery from the garden is always a bit stronger than you're used to from the store. This one's looking a little yellow on top, so I'm going to pull it, but this stem is pretty good, so I'll use that still. And then back here, this is a whole mess of parsley. It's really floppy right now for some reason. It was kind of overgrown back here, so maybe it got pushed down. But I'm going to try to groom it a bit, put it up here. But parsley uh, is very productive food. During, it grows during the winter. This will go to seed next spring, so that makes it a biennial. And there's a whole bunch of it that can be used. Looks like it will sort of benefit from being used. So I'll come through here later and selectively harvest some out. I'm just keeping my hands moving while I'm talking because we're doing a lot of grooming. Uh, it's part of rehabilitating an old bed. Also here, this is amaranth. Amaranth is one of the wonder grains of the Aztecs and the Mayans and this, these seed heads right here will drop a whole bunch of black seed right now. I don't know if you guys could see this in the camera or not. Let's see. You can see between the red stuff, there's these black seeds. And those are an edible grain. Or <laughs> if I toss these somewhere, there'll be a new crop of amaranth. <laughs> I'm going to toss them back there by that Ganesh statue, and uh, we'll get some amaranth. But when this is younger, you can eat the leaves like spinach. And this one's older. It's done. It looks nice, but it's just going to fade and look less nice. So at this point, I'm just going to cut it out, and I'm going to put it in one of these boxes, one of these guys, so uh, we can just save these heads to collect some seed from. And we'll be able to grow it again next year. So another little thing to add to our incidental harvest while we're just trying to clear this bed out. So in front here, which is why I grab, grab my gloves. Need gloves for this bit. Other glove. And let me check again on the comments. Oh, no new comments yet. We have some nettles up here, hence the gloves. So yeah, all along the front here, we've got nettles and spearmint. The spearmint was here before. The nettles kind of spread. So nettles is a weed, or are a weed, are weeds, English, please. Um, but they're, and, and they're ankle biters, right? Like if you walk back here, with, through here with shorts on, and uh, these hit some bare skin, or any skin really, they uh, would hurt quite a bit. It stings. It's not bad for you, but some people react more strongly. They can uh, have welts that last up to a day or two. For me, the welts last about 20 minutes, but it's a super nutritious food. So I'm not going to necessarily try to get 100% rid of it. I'm going to have a hard time doing that anyway because it's got this root network. But I'm just going to grab it here and pull. 
the majority of it, and that is uh, going to be add to a nettles harvest. So if you cook it or dry it or make a tea out of it, the sting goes away. Um, nettle soup is one of the traditional things you can do. Cook it, you know, with onions and potatoes and stuff and blend it up. You'd want to strip it off the stems because the stems are kind of fibrous. In fact, you can make a rope out of the bigger stems. It's yeah, full of iron, full of nutrients, very nutritious. It's also good for hay fever, which I get as a gardener, which is a bad combo. So, yeah, we're going to get a little nettle harvest out of this. And then all this spearmint that's growing, I'm just going to clip it back. Now, spearmint can be invasive. It can take over a bed. But if the bed's active, I find it's usually not too bad. You can see this isn't really taking it over. So if you do a minimum amount of maintenance, you're good. You still got some more purslane. That's not a very good stem there. So, yeah, part of us getting this bed ready is just cleaning up all this stuff along the front edge. And if you rub against the spearmint, that's actually a pretty pleasant experience. But if you rub against the nettles... That's no bueno. So, some more nettles here. I'm going to pull that out. And some more nettles here. I'm going to pull that out. So, today I get to do a class and I get to get a bed ready for the nursery. So, it's a, two things in one. And we're getting a harvest of all this stuff. So, not bad. Back in... This pot back here, there's also another volunteer nettles. This is a nice, big, healthy one. So I'm going to pull this out. I'm going to try to get it by the root because I'd rather make other uses of this pot than just nettles. We have nettles all over the place. And we have a catnip back in here, too. I don't know if you can see. We've got to harvest those peppers. But I'm going to also dig that up and pot it up. We have a cute few things in here that I'm going to use. I'm going to relocate. The catnip here is one of them. There's also a motherwort that came over here. When you start doing a lot of these herbs, you'll find that apparently one of the reasons that uh, people use them, knew them, is because they're really good at planting themselves all over the place. So this catnip is pretty much up now already. So let me just give you a close-up of that. So that's catnip. It grew from seed there probably, so that's why the cats didn't attack it yet. Apparently when it grows from seed, it's not as smelly, but now that it's disturbed, the cats will definitely smell it. I'm going to put this in a pot and replant it. The nettles, no, we're going to make soup out of that or something. But we do have a lot of nettles planted in the nursery. So I'm just going to stick it in this pot for now. And after the class, I'll take care of it, water it, put some more soil around it. I'm just going to put that aside for the moment. I've got a shovel laying over here. We're going to dig up the motherwort. Let me just check the comments again. Nope, oh, nothing new. I wish I didn't have to tap it to pull them up. I think I can safely take my gloves off now. So we'll do that. So I've got a... When you have a bed like this, you want to be able to step into it without doing any damage. You want the soil to stay as fluffy as possible. So you don't want to get in there and start stepping on everything. So as a stepping stone entry right here, I have... Uh, <laughs> this cover for a water meter. I didn't steal it, I swear. It just showed up here somehow. So that's my stepping stone. And this is the motherwort. So we're just going to try to get a little root ball with that. I do try to, and do want to kind of get to the side here so you're not just seeing my posterior as I do this. But yeah, I want this one to survive. I'm going to pot it up. I'm either make a mother plant out of it or sell it as a large plant in the nursery. It's cool right now as it's getting into 
later fall, so it's more gentle on transplanting stuff like that. But yeah, there's a big motherwort. You can see the textures of the leaves right there. I'm going to stick that in another gallon pot. I have that here. It actually wants to fit in like a little two-gallon pot. Again, I'll give that some water and pot it up nicely after the class. Another little incidental harvest I got out of this as I was going is there was, uh, we grew uh, African marigolds back there, and they're all done. But I got the old flower heads, and busting those open, this is the seed for next year. So we're, I'm going to save these. We're going to plant them up, sell them a little three-inch pot each, one or two seeds per. And, you know, if you grew marigolds, look how much seed you can get from one flower. So seed saving is always a good part of cleaning up uh, old beds. All right, so we're getting there. I'm going to get some water real quick, guys. One second. Should have drank more before I started. All right. So we almost got enough room cleared that we can put some new things in. A few more things I'm going to leave here once I fill in this hole from the motherwort. Got some more purslane there. Some grasses. Those are definitely weeds. I don't necessarily try to get all the roots out from the previous stuff if it's stuff that won't necessarily grow back. Because um, the roots are actually a good part of the soil. They'll decompose in there. And then that will uh, add to the soil underneath. And as the roots decompose, it creates little tunnels of food, basically, for worms and microbes and things to create that soil structure we're always so desperately trying to create in here. So here is a pepper from last year. This is some sort of Italian sweet red pepper. The sign for it got lost. I think that might have been a Jimmy Nardello, but it looks a little fat for a Jimmy Nardello. I don't know, but it's a nice pepper. I'm pretty sure this is a sweet pepper. So I'm going to go ahead and harvest these. Should have been harvesting them more as I went along, but again, this bed kind of got away from us. Sometimes we're so busy here growing new plants that it's hard to uh, get to the harvest. So we're so busy at the first stage of the process. But every time I clear out a bed, the hope is that, you know, you get back on top of it and that you will sort of maintain it a little bit better next time. So the peppers, I'm going to leave in. This could probably use a stick to help support it. There's a pepper that went bad. You can still use them for seed, though. Um, peppers don't cross-pollinate too much, so seed saving from them is pretty easy. There's a few green peppers on here still. We'll leave them. But peppers can sometimes make it through the winter. So if they're still in good shape at this point, I usually leave them in. There are perennials in the tropics, but they also can be frost sensitive. So here's another pepper. It's kind of a gamble when you leave them in over the winter because on one hand, you may be uh, it's pulling this weed out. This is a pellitory. I don't know if you can see it from there. On one hand, you may be saving them and have them this big starting for next year. On the other hand, they may take up all this space and then the frost hits in February and they're dead. A lot of times, though, if a frost hits them, the stem will still survive. You cut them back and then just let the stem re-sprout next year. So I'm going to take the gamble. We're going to leave these peppers. we got this pepper, this pepper, and then this pepper over here. This looks like a little hot pepper. I think this might be a scotch bonnet. I'm not sure. But it's got these little hot red ones, or orange ones, excuse me. 
here. So we'll check these out. I'm not a super hot pepper guy myself. I was when I was younger. As I got older, it uh, I don't mind the heat in my mouth, but my di my digestion uh, <laughs> makes me pay for it later. Too much information, I'm sure. But yeah, so we got a little pepper harvest out of this. And we've got one, two, three peppers that I'm going to leave. There's one other plant in here, uh, a little bonus herb. This is a mullein right here. I'll probably transplant that too, but it's not in my way at the moment, so I'm going to leave it. And then we've got some little flowers that self-seeded right here. This looks like maybe love and a mist. I'm not sure, but they're not in the way either. I am going to pull this one and this. This is fumatory. It looks like a lot of other things. I can tell, at least in person, that it's not any of the other things that look like it. This, like parsley or whatever. This is fumatory. It's just a weed that grows around here. Apparently, you can smoke it. <laughs> I don't know much about that, so I can't recommend that. But just passing on any hearsay information that I might have. How do you best groom an overgrown parsley plant? Well, over here you can see we got a lot of stems on this. But this is just opportunity. I mean, the first thing I do is just come through here and pick all the yellow stuff off. So it's all stuff that would, I would eat. And then I'd probably just come in here. I left my clippers over there, but I'll just pull some of these by hand. Uh, if you just pull against the base, they kind of come right off. The best way to groom it is to use it, right? Just come in here and just thin it out some by taking some. And so the more you harvest from it, the more that uh, you kind of thin it out, hopefully sturdy some of this up. But, yeah, this is just all usable harvest right now. Oh, there's one more plant back here, too. Another experimental perennial that I thought we lost, but when I was clearing out, it was in here. This is called a, it's a vining one. It's called Caucasus Mountain Spinach. And so apparently the leaves of this are edible it's from the Caucasus Mountains, uh, obviously. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it was just a perennial that I hadn't tried yet. Obviously, this needs somewhere to go now that it's succeeding, so... It's going to need some kind of trellis to go up or something like that. I'm just going to lay it back here for now. Mixed up with the uh, haircut needing parsley. Yeah. I would groom it by using it. I'm just kind of primping it like I was doing there. If it was not buried like it was, it probably wouldn't be quite so floppy. So now that it's exposed... Hopefully it's good. Um, oh, and one more incidental medicinal weed. There's the mullein here, I told you. And then over here is plantain. Plantain is used for skin stuff a lot. It's good in salves for skin health and healing and other conditions. I'm going to just pull this one up because we have this all over the place. And I'd rather put something more premium here. So, and... In the base of it, there was a whole row of uh, red celery in the back before that we let fully go to seed and save seed. And now I've got little celery plants coming up all over the place, <laughs> which is not a bad thing either. So we need to, uh, we had lots of choices. I could probably fully plant this bed just from stuff that's self-sowing in here. <laughs> but it gives me a little less choice in it. But yeah, so we got some plantain as well right there cool so now I think I got it clear enough Let me grab my my clippers clear enough that we can get some planting oh yeah I got some more plantain in this bed back here I've got some tomatoes <laughs> that were growing themselves but they won't survive very well right now so I'm not going to uh, let them grow but they could conceivably make it through the winter. 
Oh, and yo ho, we got one more volunteer weed back here. We have a fever few. So we're going into a lot of plant ID here, but hey, that's part of redoing an old bed. So feathery foliage. The smell really gives it away. Of course, I can't send you the smell over the internet, but um, if you were here, you'd go, okay, I will recognize that smell in the future as fever few. And this one, again, I'm going to throw in a pot, put it in some soil, moisten it, and you could probably come buy it here this weekend if you want. So cool. More harvest to put aside over here. Quite a bit of stuff just from clearing this out. And then the last thing I'd want to do in here for as far as grooming the old stuff is just primping this front edge here. This front edge, I had a lot of um, this uh, wild arugula, which is getting pretty leggy now. It would still grow, but it gets harder and harder to har harvest it. So I'm going to go ahead and call that call that a harvest for that. I actually need another harvest box now. Let's see, we'll throw it here on top of the Turkish rocket. And then in the front edge, I've got a bunch of green onions. These are evergreen, hardy, white green onions. They're also the same thing as scallions, bunching onions. So these are a little beat up here. They're kind of bent over. But the way I'd clean these up is just, again, by using them. They've got a little growth point right there. I'm going to sacrifice this one just so I can show you. Hopefully a little closer. Right where all the leaves are coming out, that's a little growth point. You could do a harvest just like that, cutting above the growth point and letting it sprout back. It's kind of a harsh harvest to do it that way. Um, but you could. Or you could take out individual ones in here, kind of do that over time, kind of keep cleaning them up, cutting them back above that growth point so that uh, these are ready to grow back nice and fresh and thick. These will keep going, so I don't need to um, pull them all up. The idea of this is it's still there. I'm going to, just for my OCD, I'm going to just go ahead and do some clipping like that because I think it looks better than all these guys flopping all over. And I'm just going to get a fresh start in here and then there's a little bit more weeding I can do in between them just to really clean them up we've got some more purslane coming up in here we've got some more of the uh, wild arugula I can clip back some more of this mint I'm gonna bare hand these little baby nettles here more green onions there. I always have a bucket going for my weeds. Got another bucket for trash. You always find trash somehow. It's part of the urban urban gardening scene. And yeah, you know, so you can see I could keep cleaning up in here, pulling out old stuff, harvesting first round of green onions. I've also got some watercress in here which I actually want to put more of. I need to grab that. I didn't... I grabbed a lot of other things to plant, but I didn't grab watercress. Um, that... I like to put in this low part because the drainage kind of comes down here. And we're also going to put a public water fountain in here. There's a little stub out where we have some plumbing. Um, and... Yeah, we're going to put a public water fountain in here. And the overflow from that is going to water the watercress. Now that was pre-COVID. I still I got to figure out. It's going to have to probably go through several filtration systems and of non-edible stuff, and then have the water go underground rather than on top. And that should be fine. But yeah, going to need to be a little bit careful about that. But just trying to use wastewater as a source of water in here, and also provide a clean source of drinking water to the public. 
going to put a filter on it so we filter the tap water. That should be in place by next spring. It's hard for me to stop here because I'm not quite done. But I'm just trying to give you guys the gist. So if you come in here, I show you next week. We'll follow up on this. You can kind of know where it started and where it's going. Got some more fennel right here. I'll try to grab the root. And then in here, there's some stuff I was going to leave too. I did a, a planting of beneficial flowers around this front edge uh, when I originally planted this up. And uh, what is left is these sweet williams here. There's some here and some over there. It's a little borage right here. I'll leave that for now. And so I'm going to leave the sweet williams in. They're a nice perennial flower. I should probably put my gloves on for this or I'll regret it. That's how nettles down there. It's got to go. But yeah, just cutting all the spearmint back and pulling the nettles out. Where did I put my gloves? Let's grab those few last nettles. And then we're going to do some planting real quick before we wind up today's class. I'm trying to get a lot done in one session here. I don't know where I put my gloves, of course. Did not go far. Ah, here they are. And let me check too if there's any more comments. Sylvia, what's going on? Hi. How are you doing? I'm trying to do these little online classes since we can't do them in person right now. Sylvia comes and waters every Monday. She used to be here four or five days a week. So I'm going to yank up these nettles on the edge here. Again, not completely eliminating them, but cleaning them up enough that hopefully visitors here aren't going to bite their ankles on it. And again, just grooming this mint by cutting it all back. And then we'll be able to harvest the fresh growth afterwards for tea and all the things that you use mint for. Okay, so now we've got some open spaces. And this is one of the things when you have an existing bed is you don't always get it completely clear, right? There's always some stuff still left. And you've got to make choices of what you still want and what you're going to keep. So we talked about my choices here. And then we've got to sort of interplant. So very rarely... Do you get to a point, depending on what you're growing, of course, do you get to a completely clear bed again? Especially when you're gardening in this kind of polyculture style where you have many things mixed together. You've got some perennials, some annuals. And so, you know, you got to take care of what's in there and make choices. And you're working around things rather than having being able to, like, dig up the whole bed again. And I'm cool with that, but... It does make it a little bit more subtle, requires some plant ID, plant recognition. Of course, I know all these plants because we intentionally started them all at some point. You know, even all the herbs that are volunteering, you know, so I recognize them. They're friends of mine that I've been seeing in Spiral Gardens for years. And chances are you'll know that too, but you'll get new things too. You know, you can always bring pieces here or... Uh, take a picture and put it up on our Facebook page and say, hey, what's this? And if we know, we'll let you know. So what do we do next? Well, we certainly can't come through here and just dig up this whole bed. And at this point, we don't really need to, right? This is all soil we just filled in here. It's nice soil, and it's loose enough. I left the roots in of some of the other things, so those will be in there to help create soil structure. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to add a whole bunch of compost to help feed the soil in between plantings. Unfortunately, I'm going to cover up some of these volunteers. I'm going to leave this little patch of parsley right here so I'll be able to draw from them. And I've got little arugulas, little watercresses, little celeries, um, and other things coming up all over the place. But I'm just putting some of this compost here. This is uh, called a Z compost from Acapulco Rock and Soil. 
We have a bunch of it for sale right now. It is certified organic. There are some caveats to that, but I feel pretty good about using it. And it's important to feed the soil every time you plant, in some way or another, because everything we just pulled out just took nutrients from the soil. And they say, I've said this many times before, but they say a good gardener grows soil, and then the soil grows the plants. So I'm putting some in all the empty spaces. I'm putting some in these uh, cinder block retaining wall we have in front that I'm going to plant things in the little, little holes in these. So I'm giving them a little bit of compost each, too, just to help renew them. And also, for my humanness, adding the compost helps me a lot because it gives me sort of a cleaner looking slate to work with where I can see more easily more readily where the blank spots are so I'm going to get some of this in here this big deep area back here I'm going to get some into the 15 gallon buckets and then back here just like the Oprah moment, like, you get some compost, you get some compost, everybody get some compost. Some in that bucket over there. Now you can see how scientific I'm being with the mounts. I just found a fig <laughs> coming from this fig tree. These didn't all get ripe this year. You can see there's still some figs going on there. So I got the tree to the north of the bed um, so that it doesn't shade it. So that's a real like stacking kind of function where we've got annuals, taller perennials, and then a tree all facing the sun. And you kind of think of the sun as like the can where the camera is, right? Um, as the camera and you put the short people in front or you have people at least kneel down <laughs> Put the tall people in back. And yeah. I'm just going to finish this bag out. Alright, so we've got a good amount of compost in here. And then to work it in, I could get in there with a digging fork. But I'm going to use uh, one of my favorite hand tools. It comes in a couple versions. Uh, these are called hand mattocks, a couple styles. So they both have this kind of little uh, blade in front. You can use like a hoe or a spade, dig a little hole with it or chop with it. Um, and then this one has like a little cultivating fork on the back. This one has more of a little pickaxe thing. So depending on what you're doing, they're pretty handy. I'm going to use this one right now just to kind of mix this compost in a little bit right and open the soil up a little bit so i'm just going to do a little surface cultivation here but not a deep dig and in a bed like this there's really no need unless it's really hard and compacted there's really no need to turn the soil in fact if you did that you might do more harm than good because there's layers of things living down there it's a whole little metropolis of life. And some things got to be closer to the surface. Some things got to be down. JJ's got to log off. But looking forward to watching the rest later and stopping by this weekend. Loving these classes. Cool. Right on. Glad you're enjoying it, JJ. Thanks for letting me know. It's also very encouraging when people make comments and stuff to know that people are watching. It feels very impersonal in some ways doing the classes online like this, but since we can't do classes in person the way we used to do, you know, we're doing some. There's like an event here on Wednesday uh, where we have like groups of seven come at a time, but the standing room only 30, 50, 100 people in a class uh, just can't do right now for obvious reasons. So doing them online 
is great. And the great thing about the video thing, too, is that people can watch them afterwards, right? So, like, the first one I did so far has, like, more than 500 views. And that's certainly more people than we could have fit in here in person. So it's really nice knowing that all that information got out there. I don't know. At some point, maybe everybody will have watched them, and then I could talk a lot less. <laughs> um, that's the goal. But for now, we've got to transfer the information. So I'm not demonstrating the best posture right now because I'm just doing this fast style to try to get to the point where we can plant stuff. But you can see what I'm doing. I'm just going through all the bare spots where we have some compost. And I'm just giving it a light surface cultivation with the handmatic. This is a great tool again. It's got, you don't have to work too hard because you just can use its own momentum to kind of get into the soil. And it's got a little lever action once you get in it. And so those two things together, you can kind of let the tool mo do most of the work. You're just kind of lifting it up. And from there, it's planting itself and you're levering it. Um, it's pretty good. I like it a lot. That's done. Well, actually not quite. There's something I should have done first, and we'll do that now, is the compost could probably be enough in here. Let me do a little time check, too. Four o'clock. So we're actually, I need to finish because I'm trying to just go an hour here. Um, I'm going to give it some fertilizer, too. This might be overkill. Because we're kind of late in the year, I want to make sure this stuff grows fast enough before it gets cold. I'm going to use this stuff that we used in the bucket last time. Uh, this is a mostly fish-based fertilizer, organic. Um, it's got a lot of nitrogen, a lot of phosphorus, decent amount of potassium. It's got a broccoli on here, so you know it's good for brassicas, for cabbage family crops, also known as whole crops or cruciferae. Let the fire truck pass. This has fish bone meal, fish meal, feather meal, sulfate of potash, alfalfa meal, and kelp meal. So a lot of good stuff in there. It's also got a good amount of calcium and sulfur, besides nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. So, yeah, this will the nitrogen especially is going to make all this leafy stuff grow a lot more quickly. So I'm going to again do very scientific amounts of this. I'm just going to do little handfuls and sprinkle them around, mostly in the empty pots. You can throw some at the base of some of the existing plants, too, to kind of give them a little boost. And when I water this, it'll work it in a little bit. We're also going to come back with our cultivating tool one more time and mix this into the surface a little bit. Shoot. I really should wait till next week to do the planting part of this, but I'm anxious to get the plants in the ground now so they start growing now before it gets a week later and a week colder. So we're just going to do a rush job. I'm going to show you some examples. I'll probably finish it up later. Um, but I'm just going to give you the basics of what I'm adding. But so, so far, Showed you the bed. I did a little pre-clearing, but we did some more clearing together. Got some harvest out of the weeds and the volunteering herbs. And now we are um, feeding the soil for the next planting. So I'm just going to do the same thing I did with the compost with this fish meal in here now. And I'm just going to go through and lightly cultivate it into the first surface of the soil. And then when we water, it'll really kind of work itself down there. Liza. Missed most of the day, we'll, but we'll watch the replay. Appreciate the classes. Thank you very much for saying that. I've already planted your fall garden. Does it make sense to go back and top dress with the biofish? Or did I miss the boat on that? Mostly growing greens. You can. You can do it at any time. Put it around the base. I put some around the base of these plants just now. Like I put a little between the celery 
And if it's too rough to go in with this at this point, I can just come in with my hands, right? I mean, I've got these pretty seasoned garden hands at this point that I don't really care about messing up. But I um, just can come in here and kind of massage it with my fingers just to get that uh, fish stuff in there a little bit so it's not going to just run off when I water. Like I could just as well do this with my hands or the tool and just get it into the soil a little bit so it stays put. It'll also biodegrade a little faster that way. And same thing back here. But yeah, this stuff's granulated, so it's time release. You can also do the same with compost. The one thing not to do is pile compost too high around the base of existing plants. Because you can uh, rot them that way. I just found a chicken bone in here. I'm just going to stick that down into the soil too. And uh, let that go into the soil over time. Let some plant find that and go, ooh, phosphorus and calcium. Yeah, so I'm just doing this part with my hands. could still do it with this. And, yeah, these are these 15-gallon buckets back here. I don't know how well you can see them. Just getting them ready, too. There's one brassica left in this. I don't know which one it is. Looks like it got a little chewed up by some rodent. I'm going to leave it in there, though, because that's definitely viable for, for coming back. All right, so now we got the fish stuff worked in. So I'm going to let you know what I'm going to plant now. I'm not going to plant it all on camera because we're getting low on time, and I don't want to make these too long. Um, but... In the front edge here, just like we did these green onions, I want to put some more chives. I'm big on chives. Um, this is actually a white onion. Uh, I might do a red onion instead. We might do a few bulb onions in here. But some chives versus the scallions, just a little finer. For the front edge of the cinder blocks, um, I'm going to do some more beneficial flowers. So I've got this one, which is a beneficial bug mix. It's got cosmos and poppies and some alyssum and stuff. And I've got some alyssum specifically, too. Maybe I'll put one of those there. These I'm going to pop out, stick in these cinder blocks. And the purpose of that is pest control and also feeding our local pollinators and bees and stuff, um, giving them some flower forage. And these types of flowers are really good for attracting beneficial insects that are predators of our less beneficial insects, our, our pests. And so I'm going to track them here. They're going to take a little sip off these flowers, and then they're basically going to eat or lay their eggs in so that a lot of it eats. Uh, a lot of our pests. So interplanting with the types of flowers that really attract those guys is always a good thing, and it makes it look pretty too, right? So no harm in that. So we're going to get those in, and then now the question is what we put in here because a lot of greens right now, if we put too many of uh, cabbage family greens, collards and kales and stuff, those are going to live through next year. And any space we put these in, it's going to lock them up in here and we'll, you know, not have room for more summer stuff here. And I do want to keep this bed seasonal because it is a demo. I do want to have room to put maybe a summer squash or some peppers or something like that, maybe even try growing a melon. Um, you know, made a tomato. So perennial, not perennial, but biennial greens, collards and kales, cabbages, yeah, we'll have to either cut them out early if we put them in here 
Or what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them in these buckets in the back so that they can continue to be here, but they uh, won't block this main planting area. And in the main planting area, I'm going to put stuff that's going to be done a lot more quickly than that's going to be done in the season rather than in a year, year and a half. Now, greens we put in now will flower in the spring, but they might keep going. So, yeah, to hedge my bets, I'm going to put it back here. The main one that I'm going to feature back there this time, last time in the other bed we did dino kale, and I could easily do more dino kale because I love it. I can't get enough of it. My son and I eat like a whole bunch of it every night. Um, just make sure we get all the nutrients we need. But this one is kind of a, a grandfather of collards, kale. This is a Portuguese, it's called Portuguese cabbage, but it's also kind of a collard. It's a loose-headed collard. Um, and the Portuguese, apparently, the, the collards and stuff actually started up around their area. And then they got spread by their imperialist exploits when they went around the world. They brought uh, this type of collard with them, basically. And they got bred from there into uh, other varieties, collards and kales. But So this is one of the ancestors of collards. Um, and it's basically somewhere between a cabbage and a collard. It's like a loose heading cabbage or a heading collard but not like a tight, like a cabbage ball. Anyway, it's really productive. <coughs> Excuse me. And we're going to grow some of it. So I'm going to spread it around in these beds back here. Now, for one of the main feature plants in this deeper area back here, I think what I was going to do is some... Um, this is a romaine. This is Paris Island Cos, C-O-S, romaine. This is like the old-fashioned variety of your standard romaine and just the big kind of thick stemmed one. I'm going to plant those because they're one of the more winter hardy ones. They got that stiffness to them, right, which makes them more resistant if we get hard pelting rains. And they're more resistant to freeze as well. And they get pretty big too. So this one has, it's a six pack, but we've got like 20 plants in here. So I'm going to put those all in here as a, uh, as, a, as a crop that we'll be harvesting over time. And in this front lower area, I'm going to put some baby bib lettuce. So this is sort of a little gem type. It's not exactly a little gem. It's called a new ham. But little gem, it's kind of like saying Kleenex. Little gem is a specific variety. But they're used to represent um, all the little mini head types now and so they're smaller they'll be done faster you can grow more heads in a smaller space and sometimes i like them too because they're a size that a person can eat in a single meal versus a head of romaine it can be many meals which is not bad they'll keep in the fridge but i like to eat things fresh so along this lower area here i'm going to mix up a bunch of these um, baby bibs the new hymns and then for color I'm going to, I've got these red pak choys. Pak choys are a nice Asian green. Um, there's another Asian green over there, Tokyo Bacana. I think I'm going to mix some of those up in here too. But these are all pretty quick to harvest. So they'll probably grow fine through the winter. They won't bolt so fast because it's getting cooler now. Um, but they will be done in time for next year's warm season harvest. So that's cool. And they also have color, right? So that will really kind of uh, contrast with these greens. So we'll mix those up with this. I'll probably also mix some this regular arugula in there this time. Mix it all around. So we're mainly going salad, but the Portuguese kale, collards, loose-headed cabbage, whatever, they're somewhere in between. Um, and the Asian greens, and uh, there's some more Asian greens I'll probably mix up in here, are really going to uh, give us a combination of fresh stuff and cooked stuff. We've got more of the onion stuff, and then probably uh, we'll get some sneak some peas in here too. I might build another one of those um, what you call it the uh, bamboo trellises for them to climb up on. Peas, 
give us some variety in the winter, and they also they also uh, use the vertical, which gives us more production space. What works really good for these peas too, if you want a quick and quick and easy trellis, is this to stick a standard tomato cage in here, and that's going to give something for the peas to climb onto. Maybe maybe I'll put the peas over here so they'll shade as little stuff as possible. The sun that's south that way, right where you all are. You guys are my sun today, S U N. Yeah, we'll put the uh, Portuguese cabbages in that pot, in that pot, and we'll put the peas crawling up this. We only need a few of them in here, so I'm still drawing from the same six-pack that I used for that one over there. And then we're just about done. Paul, right on. Cool. Thank you very much for that. Working on a small food forest here in southeastern Pennsylvania. Oh, man. Um, just planted a couple pounds of garlic for the winter. Uh, straw bale mulching and putting the soil to bed for the winter as a preparing an area for some fruit trees and berries to plant. Nice, man. You are on the case. That sounds like some good work. Uh, so, yeah, I'm not going to plant this on camera right now because I don't want to go too long. But we talked about what I'm going to plant. You know, I'm just going to pull these out. I'll just do one. It's pretty simple. I just loosen around where it is. You can push up from the bottom. You can either kind of just coax it out with gravity like that. Oh, these are dry underneath. Oh, good to know. Let me water those some more. Or you can uh, use like the back of a spoon or something to pull them out. And then, yeah, I'm just going to pop them in. The soil at this point, I could just do it with my hands like that. I can also use that little hand mattock I had. And yeah, I'm just going to go through, pop all these in, in a little triangular pattern, kind of like how dominoes fit together. A lot of people want to plant in rows because that's just sort of a human order thing, or in grids. I like the pattern of a domino five, where you got one row and then the next row alternates in the spacing, and that's how you get more stuff in one space. The smaller things, obviously, you plant closer together. Uh, and some of them, if you wanted to harvest them at half size, you could plant them. Um, well, backtracking a second, you would optimally plant things uh, at the size that they get when they're finished, right? So if this is a mini head of lettuce that's going to get that big, you'd need to plant them that far apart. You know, So you have one here, one here. Now, you could put more than that if you want to harvest some of them at half size, right? So you won't get the full size out of each one, but you will get production out of the in-between spaces that would be waiting for the other plant to get fuller. Kind of like the trick we were doing with the, um, the Chinese broccoli, the gailan over there, uh, but even a little differently, using it with the same plants, but over-planting but as it gets too full, cutting some of them out. The other thing I'm going to add in here, I'm going to add some seed in between things, maybe in between the uh, Paris Island Romaine up there. I've got seed for, this is a broccoli rob, or just rob, spring rog, rob, R-A-A-B. This is a mini broccoli, kind of the same concept as the Gailan, uh, but it's a name more people would recognize over here. Um, and... Yeah, it's kind of like a mustard. It almost has radish-type leaves. Gets about this big. Makes a little uh, a little broccoli floret at the top. And yeah, it should be quick. So I'm going to mix some of the seed in between things. I'm just going to make little holes, drop a seed or two, and do that around. I'm not going to just toss them because then birds might come and eat them up. Um, so you want to kind of get them into the ground. But I'm not going to do rows because that tightens the spacing too much. I'm just going to do that same sort of uh, uh, hexagonal planting pattern <laughs> but with seeds. <laughs> anyway, that, and I'm also going to grab a six-pack of watercress and put it in this area. So, yeah, a lot of stuff to plant. I wish I had time to do it all on camera, but that would just drag on too long. You'll see a lot of me huffing and puffing over this bed, but I think I got the concept 
across. In the beginning of the class next week, uh, we'll come. We'll look at the pot we did last time. We'll check on how this is doing. I'll show you through the planting pattern that I did that I just described with words just now, but I'll show you what it looks like next time. And then we'll also uh, figure out something else to do for next week. So we're going to do, I think, two more of these, three more of these. Uh, we're just going to go through November with this weekly thing. I'm going to take a break because we take a break with Spiral at that point. But then in next year, end of January, beginning of February, we're going to start the series up again. And I'll be doing a lot. We're going to also get some other people in here teaching. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'll just do a weekly thing, but then have other people throughout the week. Or maybe, I don't know. We don't know the timing of the schedule or whatever. But there'll be a lot of online classes next year as well. But be sure to catch the last few of them here, November. If you want to come into the nursery and support this project by buying plants and also taking them home for yourself, we're open for sales to the public on Saturday and Sunday from 11 to 5, no, 10 to 5, excuse me, 10 to 5, Saturday and Sunday, all the weekends through November. Then we'll be closed uh, for public sales in December and January, reopening again the first weekend of February. Uh, they're still volunteering Tuesday through Friday from noon to 5. On Wednesdays, we have a special uh, racial justice Wednesday, for folks of color on the farm, and uh, European descended folks over on this side, and this reflecting a lot on the um, current discussions around race and and uh, yeah, just doing that. And then uh, I think that's it. So yeah, just filling you in. Um, this video will continue to be online, which uh, if you see it or if you're seeing this, you'll already know that. <laughs> um, but yeah, thanks for joining. I'm gonna cut it off now. Make sure there aren't any more. Uh, the lissoms look like this right now, Liza. There's a couple more of this size. I am actually stole this one to plant. <laughs> but um, they're mostly tiny right now because people keep buying stuff. We got hit so hard because of COVID. I mean, it's great. But uh, we had no idea of the quantities of things that people would be wanting this year because so many people are home. So many people are gardening. Um, it's fantastic, and uh, we're going to have plans to keep up with it even better next year. So we'll see how we do. But anyway, thank you, everybody, for watching. I hope this was useful to you. If you watching it later and you have questions or you watched it and you have questions you didn't think of while it was going, please put them down in the comments. I'm going to keep my eye on those and answer those as they come up. Again, here at Spiral Gardens, 2850 Sacramento Street. I will see you later. Bye-bye. Go turn the camera off now. See you all later, good people.